Future Design Podcast. This is Takatoshi Shibayama, CEO of Blockshine Singapore. You're listening to the Future Design Podcast, where visionaries talk about what the future beholds. Today, I got Niraj Nagpal, Exchange Wire Ad Tech Personality of the Year in APAC for the year 2019. Here's here to discuss the world of programmatic advertising. Well, thanks for coming on board.、Um, so, just let's talk about free will. You know, and where where is that going? Do, do we have some or no? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, do we? You know, like where where is where is the what's the concept of of free will? So I'd go like the the Cartesian route, or which which way do you want to go? Whichever you want to go. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's a it's, no no one has free will. You have free will within constraints, right?、Mm. If you wanted to go play GTA right now in real life, you would be arrested and hanged and everything else. No,、mm. of course, no free will. Right. Um, whether are people aware that they make choices because of something else happening to them,、mm-hmm. whether marketing or external influences、yeah. or whatever baggage you get from your parents—that's a very、yeah. different thing than, yeah, yeah. than free will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we're all like influenced by anything. So, I mean, free will is not really, you know, free, obviously. Um, and um, you know, where you know, in your in your profession, where you're you're supposed to influence. Uh, consumers、uh, on what to buy, or or you know a certain、um, action that you're you're required、um, by your clients to 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 do that to 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 the general public. I mean, you know, what what is the the、um, the real objective of、uh, changing you know free will? I, I mean, I think the real question is why do we do what we do? Just to make yeah. money, yeah, or provide for money, or you know have. Well, our seven basic needs met, right? It、right. <laughs> means to know. I I don't think anyone wakes up in the morning saying I want to be a marketer, right? Or I'm a consumer. But that's how you kind of viewed, right?、Mm-hmm. You're the the haves or the have-nots, yeah. The influencer or influencers or、mm-hmm. whatever, and, and maybe、right. that maybe those worlds are blurring because now you're、yeah. an influencer, right? And you're also a consumer, yeah. So you can you have a, maybe a better one to a two-way communication with a brand、mm-hmm. or or marketer, right? Which is pretty interesting now.、Yeah. Things have quietly changed. Yeah, where、well, there's probably less gatekeepers.、Mm, so. But even as an individual, you know, you don't wake up in the morning and say, "Hey, I want to consume." Yeah, right. <laughs> and you know, I, I think you know when we go through our daily lives. I mean, the, the only point or the time that you actually think about, "Oh, I want to consume something," is、uh, you know, for、hungry? me, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. Twelve thirty plus. And 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 for you know marketers to say, "Okay, I'm gonna influence this person to me- to buy something." Or, or you know, go out and do, do certain you know things that you, your clients want you to do. I mean, you know, how is that process、uh, being done? It's I, subconscious, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean subliminal. The, I mean, think of how many advertisers advertisement the person sees a day, right?、Mm. Hundreds and hundreds.、Mm. Can you recall a jingle?、Mm. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Right,、yeah. but but you make an unconscious choice all the time, right?、Mm. Which toothpaste?、Mm. Which your brand loyalty to something? Yeah, you have a preference for toilet paper. Why do human beings have a preference for toilet paper? Right, we just we, we just do, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very it's a utility. Yeah, yeah. Right? But you have an opinion on yeah ply. But you know daily daily stuff I understand, but、yeah. like things that are outside of our daily、um, you know habits,、mm-hmm. um, you know, are the hardest ones、uh, to influence people to do,、yeah. right? And so, what are the tactics? Um, that that you guys deploy、uh, in order to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a mark. I'm a technologist, so、mm. it's more about.、Uh, I mean, and we get more into what what we what we do as a company,、mm. what I do as a, a specialist.、Mm. Um, the the end of the day is always about you know moving a product,、mm. right? Whether the product is a a person and and improving that that standing or you know actual physical or, or electronic good.、Mm. Um, the tactics I think are the same as anyone else, right?、Mm. It's just the. Establishing trust, credibility,、mm. um, some sort of fear or emotional connection.、Mm. Right? People buy things based off emotions, not anything else.、Mm, of course, right?、Yeah. So, if, if if you think your neighbor has something that you you may not even want it two months ago,、mm. you see them having it. There's a the, the emotion is envy,、mm. right? Right. right, right. <laughs> so, so、yeah. one of those tactics. Yeah. Well, so. Right, and 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 you're a technologist, as you said.、Yeah. So, so what what do you, what is it exactly that you do? Yeah, I think it's a. <laughs> The, the world that I live in is is, is full of very obfuscation、mm. of, of what is actually happening, but I think everyone's become very aware in the past five years that 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 you're being targeted,、mm. right? And I think ten to fifteen years ago you were being targeted in a very different way.、Mm. Um, it used to be at least in the U.S. you would get a a mailing list or a, a catalog sent to your house,、mm. right? What you didn't realize was that the order numbers in each of those catalogs was different. So when you actually called in and made an order. 
they were able to figure out that your household uses different order number to make a purchase. Holy shit, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, uh-huh. so that's the idea of direct to mail marketing was a, you know 25 years ago. That was uh-huh. the, the the real way it was was happening. Right. Those principles um, and a professor can go into more details went to the world of online, where you started having identities mm. um, based on what you do. So you would go to a certain, you would go to a sports website. You might go to two or three. Mm. You are now known as a sports enthusiast, mm. right? You would then probably be guessing that you might be a male. Mm. Right, so all of those are signals that you're sending out to to the internet, saying you're doing X Y Z, or interested in X Y Z. So the the ability to use that data or those signals um, is what we call programmatic advertising, mm-hmm. uh, which is a very fancy way of just saying targeting you for a reason, using data to mm-hmm. do so. Mm-hmm. Um, the company that I work for and previous companies that I have worked for in the past have have been on on the, the advertiser side using that data to make sure when they actually buy a, an advertisement, there's a reason behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, the old way of doing things was that you would buy a TV spot. Someone might go to the bathroom. You, it, it might be a female watching it versus mm. a, a sports ad or something like that. It wasn't very relevant. Mm-hmm. And about 50% of it was wastage. Mm-hmm. And you yeah. have no way of knowing so. Right. right. Um, so the idea of programmatic advertising is slightly an improvement mm. where you're using data or some sort of inferences to make it, mm. uh, to so just decide what to show right. an ad. So, so if you think about the history of like you know advertising, yeah. was it like very static for a very long time, and suddenly because of the use of internet, or completely you know spiked and, and yeah, I mean, I mean the, the, the rate of change has changed right? just because right. our technology is better. Yeah, right. Our internet's better. Right. Um, our server spaces are cheaper. Mm. Right. Our computational power is much faster, mm. and so all of that kind of leads to this this new world where the decisions to serve you an ad or not show you an ad or mm. what type of ad to show you mm. is being done much much with a better level of improvement. Mm. Um, you know, the first advertisements were on the you know, the walls of coliseums and stuff like that, right? Mm, the, right. The, the, general, the general thing of it hasn't changed, though, the value, right? right? And you're trying to send a message out uh-huh. and get an action and make an emotional connection of some sort. Right. Um, the tools have gotten a lot better. Mm. Um, and then the blowback is that people are trying to question mm. who, is, who is controlling these tools, who's controlling the data, mm. what's being used, who's who's using it, why they're being used for, mm. um, how long are you going to keep that data for. The, the, the conversation has changed mm. in the past five years or so. Mm. I, I read that the, in, it was 1994 when the first digital ad yeah. appeared. On, right? on hotwire.com for yeah. AT&T. Right, yeah. yeah. And then how, how has it, um, you know, back, how, so how, how was it back then? And then, um, you know, how, how has it evolved over time? Yeah, I mean, th- those original forefathers, they made a lot of money. Mm. Um, but a lot of those companies have gone out of business. So mm. I don't, you spend enough time in the U.S., you remember Lycos, yeah, yeah. CompuServe, yeah, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Compa- I can't remember half oh, yeah. the companies, right? Like <laughs> yeah, all, all these dinosaurs that, that have yeah. gone out of business, right? Mm. Um, but what they were doing was the precursor of, of just creating new website space, mm-hmm. right? A, a magazine doesn't really want to sell magazines, right? They, they care about getting enough subscribers sure. so they can go to an agency and say, we have a million people yeah. or five million people mm. um, who are into this audience and they just yeah. chop full of ad, um, magazine, um, ads, right? Yeah, so like when you, when you look at a beauty magazine, mm. what, 25 pages are, are content? Mm. The rest are like, it's super thick, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and I the, remember like reading through Playboy. And you were reading the, the articles. Yeah, exactly. Sure. That's, what, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> You did, yeah. you did the crossword also. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and and um, so so in, in in that sense, um, you know, I guess you know it's it's not just about like kind of filling the space anymore, right? Yeah. And and um, you, you know, obviously, advertisers want to know more about what the person does and yeah. all that. When was that inflection point? I mean, like you know, technology must have improved uh, in order for yeah. you know th- they've been. Uh, to enable them to do that? I would say it probably started about 17 to 18 years ago, okay. roughly, like when the technology got to a point where they could handle all of this. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially, like if you were going to launch a website 18 yeah. years ago, mm-hmm. right, you wouldn't have the coverage to go talk to every advertiser in the U.S. or in the world yeah. or every agency. And so you would be stuck with a lot of, of opportunities where you just couldn't monetize, yeah. right? And you would just sh- not have an ad or show something very right. at the cheap. Yeah. Um, so these brokers, like everything else in finance, is brokers appear, uh-huh. right? And these brokers are called ad networks, okay? Right? Um, and they made a lot of money, and essentially they were going to many, many websites, thousands of them, saying, "We, you have all this space that we call remnant or unsold mm-hmm. inventory, right? Right? Give it to us at a dollar. Uh-huh. Right? We'll just buy from you ahead of time." They'll then go and flip it to someone else at five dollars or ten dollars, right. uh-huh. um, with some data on top of it or not. Okay. But th- what they were doing as a broker was just making it a lot easier for an, an advertiser agency to call one person instead of calling a thousand websites. 
Um, and so that was the first 10 years. I see. Um, and those ad networks, they were making 50 to 70% margins. Wow. Um, they, uh, the mistake they kind of ma made was they went public. Mm -hmm. um, right. So they, they exposed <laughs> yeah. their books, I see, essentially. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. And so the agencies and the advertisers got a bit wise to, like, we're making these guys much, extremely rich. Yeah. Um, we want to do this ourselves. Mm. And at that point, 10 years had passed, um, and the technology got a lot cheaper for them to do it themselves mm. or to start looking into it. Um, and so that's kind of the inflection point. So about 2000, what are we, 19 now? Mm -hmm. About 12 years ago, it became a little bit more mainstream. Right, yeah. I see. And then can you, like, I, I know nothing about this yeah, industry, right? So, so how, how does, uh, how, how did program, pro program, programmatic, uh, yeah, yeah um, actually work? I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, that, that's the boring yeah. part. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I think everybody's kind of interested, right? Because yeah. this whole world of like fake news and all this stuff, and then they want to know, like, how does this thing freaking happen? To yeah, them, and, right? and the fake news in some ways is fueled by some of the, the darker webs of programmatic mm. um, where the reason why you start a fake news website mm. for the most part in Mongolia or Maldi, Mal Maldi, Maldi, wherever and you're yeah. doing in Greece um, is because some advertiser is probably going to pay for that real estate. It might be usanewsawesome.com. Mm. I don't know if it's a real website. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. a hypothetical, right? Right. right. right? And you're going to have some inflammatory comment, um, some content that's going to be there and someone may go there for real or maybe a bot might just go there. Mm. Um, when that web page is loading, that website is then sending a signal or an auction request mm. to another party to say, hey, someone's about to be on my site. What ads can you show me? Mm. Um, that party, which we call a supply um, side platform. Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna try to avoid using acronyms. Yeah. They essentially rep represent the interests of the, the publisher yeah. or the website. We'll then go to different technologies that are called demand or money or demand side platforms. Okay. They're, they're the ones that have the money inside it. Mm. And then they respond back with an ad that they think is worthwhile. Mm. Um, and so everyone has an incentive for, for this right. ecosystem. And, and they're all different companies that are... Uh, yeah, and, and, and this, all this happens within one-tenth of a second, microseconds. Wow, wow. okay. Um, and so it, it's very fast. So huh. walk us through the mm. of that in, in the, in the Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it happens all the time. It's it literally every time you go to a website, there's a reason why you're seeing that shoe ad versus mm. your wife might see a dress ad. Right. Um, because you have shown some sort of signal to, to an advertiser or to a... a while mm -hmm. you're browsing, that you are a shoe enthusiast versus your wife is about to be sexist, maybe looking yeah, for yeah. A, a, a dress on Zalora. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's where you come very valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and so an, an actual auction takes place mm -hmm. um, within that one-tenth of a second. Right. Well, that's like just like, you know, one website there you're going, right? Yeah. And then you can't just classify this person as just, you know, that he likes, you know, this person likes dresses or yep. shoes, right? I mean, you must have more data than that this, to, you know, to classify this yeah. person as a shoe lover or, you know, like a whatever. whatever. And, and that, that's when that raises the question of how good the data is. Mm -hmm. right? So yeah, when yeah. an advertiser is using it, that's on them to say this is the quality data source or not. Yeah. You, you could have been looking for a house three months ago. Mm. You bought your house last week. You're no longer relevant for them. Yeah. But they may they might be getting a data from a, a data broker mm. saying you're, you're looking for a new house or a car yeah. or travel. You know, travel is the hardest one because everyone technically likes to travel, yeah. right? So right. <laughs> we're always looking at tickets. Yeah, yeah. But there are specialty companies that do nothing but work with hotels and, and airlines to say, this is a travel enthusiast for a certain destination. Mm -hmm. Make sure you show them your, your hotel for Bali because they just booked for Bali yesterday yeah. or two right. hours ago. Mm -hmm. So it's really about ca capturing that relevancy. Right. And then knowing who you are when you're on your computer or when you're on your mobile phone and trying mm -hmm. to say you're the same person. Right. Um, and now it's really about uh, you've done something on your, your computer. You've gone to a store with your and you have your mobile phone, so they now they, we might know that. Right. Uh, and then when you turn on your TV, you're still the same person. Yeah. How do we make sure we show you a diff that same that same ex mm -hmm. that same messaging? Yeah. Or how, upsell you. How do they know that? Yeah. So the the, the original parameters are a thing called cookies. Uh -huh. um, they sound harmless, and yeah. th they were designed to, to do something else. They were designed to make your web experience um, easier, so you don't have to keep logging in every time. Right. Um, but they also then start being tied to behaviors that you're doing. Mm. So you search certain terms you get this cookie on you. Mm. You went to this section of the site, you get this different cookie. Mm. Um, you haven't been back, that's a different cookie. Yeah. You, you put something in your shopping cart, you forgot to buy. Mm. You're now a shopping cart abandoner. <laughs> let, us, let us find you before you forget. Mm. And this is why this, the, our web experience is really based off that profiling that you're doing. Um, cookies don't really work in the, the, your mobile phone environment. So in Asia, um, it's a, you have to target very differently. Because right. most people don't have computers or, and they'll never have computers. Right. And this data is like this cookie is stored on your own hard drive, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's not on web on, on the web or anything. No, so, it's not shared with. So the third all party. these companies are like accessing my hard hard drive 
for this data. The the mechanics, I don't remember how how it actually works, yeah. but it's a, a, essentially as anonymized. So it's not your name is not there, your address is not there. Yeah. It's just a very basic. Yeah. yeah. Um, like what to the section of the site. Right. It's up to the com the companies and to figure out what to do with that signal. Right. Right. They can say, oh, you've been to fifty sports sites. You're a real sports enthusiast. Yeah. Versus me, who might just read one section. Right. So that that's uh, the the beauty is what you make out of the data. Right. Out of that noise. Yeah. But still, it, it, it's mind boggling to to like know that you know some program is accessing my hardware and then accessing that cookie. And then you know using that data yep. um, for whatever purpose that they want, right? I mean, the thing is, you know, hardware is mine, right? I mean, you know, your computer is yours, yeah, but and, and, and that's why the, the change in the, in the policies around the world have been more about when you go to a website, you you now see mm. you know notifications saying we collect cookies, yeah, for marketing. I get that all the time, yeah. but that but that wasn't the case five years ago, mm. and it's it's that raising that concern of right. who has access to it, right. what are they doing with it, how long are they storing with it, mm. are, are there governance mm. around it? Um, you have things and and you know like things like GDPR and yeah, other, yeah. other initiatives in the U.S. All about trying to educate everyone. Right. Um, you know, oftentimes when when governments regulate this, so they 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 it's very complex. Yeah. So it's not as simple as saying someone's hacking my computer and getting that's not really what's happening. Right. But it can be construed that way. Mm -hmm. um, it's really this is what keeps websites in business mm -hmm. to be able to sell targeted ads. Right. It's what keeps journalism in print mm -hmm. because if they if they're not able to mine this or at least sell this. Um, they can't afford to pay their their journalists, right? And, and journalism is very much a dying industry, right? Right, right. So there's a there's a value exchange that people need to mm. really understand, right? Um, but it can be it can sound very big brotherish. I can understand yeah, your yeah, point yeah. of view, like, yeah. But. yeah. But but so 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 okay. So you 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 kind of lined out all the players in the in yep. industry, right? So you have uh, the people who run the websites, yep. And then you have uh, these what you said supply platforms. Yeah. So essentially, it's four players. I would say oh, one is. I, I always say follow the money. Mm -hmm. So you have an advertiser. Right. An advertiser has budgets. They want you. They want to spend money to get more sales, yeah. move a product, launch, mm -hmm. have a messaging, something along those yeah. lines. They employ an agency mm -hmm. to trust them with their, with their money. They're an agent okay. of the advertiser, right? That's like mm -hmm. a steward of, of some sort. Um, they trust the agency to come up with the slogans and the messaging and the mm -hmm. positioning and you know, mm -hmm. and to then go and buy media. That, mm. that reflects a brand's the the mm. advertiser's value. Those players were around before yeah. the whole, you know, the and, and they were they were buying media, this. but they were buying yeah. media kind of blindly. Right, right. They were literally over martini yeah. lunches and right. things. Like, it was very like Mad Men. Yeah, yeah things yeah. just kind of happened, and right. you didn't ask questions. Yeah. Um, this is the, the change is really more about using data mm. and signals in a more appropriate way. So mm. It's more somewhat a more level of accountability. Right. Um, right. Then you have the middle companies that are collecting the data, whether it's, um, and then the. So the technologies that are used, one is on the demand side, which mm -hmm. is a DSP, which is, right. just means a buyer, right, um, or a broker of some sort. That's deciding on which invent, which websites to buy, mm -hmm. and then the sell side, which tries to make more money, right. Um, and and all those transactions happen in, within milliseconds, right. And we're we're talking, I don't know, in in the U.S., 150 billion, 170 billion dollars a year going through this. Damn. These type of stuff. Wow. Asia, I don't know, less than 10 billion or so, maybe a little bit more, right. depending on the country. Huh. Wow. Not not talking about China. China, it's its yeah. own thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so the ad advertiser, obviously, their business is, you, you said, come with the slogans, make the yep. catchy, you know, videos and stuff, and then they they kind of um, outsource. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're they're partners, so that's why you're an yeah. agent. Yeah. Um, and the, and the CMO job is to pick the best agency and make sure you have the best rates and things like that, and then mm -hmm. you trust the agents, the agency to do their what they're good at, which is negotiating and buying, mm -hmm. uh, on on your behalf. Yeah. And then they use various different technologies to do so, right? Um, which is uh, where where it gets very complex, right? Because um, different technologies buy into different technologies, and the, if you if you try to track the money, essentially for every dollar that an, an advertiser puts in, yeah, right, that they give to their agent agency to spend, mm -hmm. right, maybe twenty cents of that actually goes to the website. Mm -hmm. So you have a huge dilution, mm -hmm. um, which is unintended. That's not mm -hmm. how a, a good ecosystem should be working. Mm -hmm. There's at this point, there's still a little bit too many middle middleware companies mm -hmm. taking percentage of. of Five cents here, ten cents yeah. there, uh, but it adds up very fast. Right, right, right. And then all these, all these platforms, I guess, or, yeah. or, or platforms or, is the right way to do yeah, it. Yeah, right. are saying that uh, you know their technology is better than the others. Yeah. You know, and and how do you actually know you know that? I mean, how yeah, do you, you, don't. <laughs> it's, you don't. It's a lot of it's. They, they themselves are marketers. Right. They do marketing. They raise money. Mm. Um, some of them go public. Right. Some of them go out of business when they go public. Right. Um, there was a company in the U.S. 
Um, it was evaluated at $2 billion, a company called Rocket Fuel. Mm-hmm. Right? They're, they're value prop to the marketplace. We are the smartest people with your money. Right. We develop the best algorithms. You brand, give us your money. Mm-hmm. We'll, we will run the media on your behalf, um, and we'll get you the best results. Mm-hmm. And sim- I'm simplifying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, excuse sure. me. But, um, and they went public. Uh-huh. And then when they, they went public, they exposed that they were making 50 to 60% margin right, of the right, dollars right, they were right, getting. Yeah, yeah. So the minute an advertiser realizes that, they're like, well, we could do this ourselves or... Like yeah. I want ten percent of that margin or something yeah, like yeah, that. Of course. Um, and they eventually their stock cratered after a long period of time. They pivoted a few times. Mm-hmm. They were sold for a hundred, hundred or two hundred million dollars. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. So wow. so some people made money, uh-huh. but also then so that it's hard All to right. know. It's uh, the times have gone a lot rough right. in, in this industry. So it's better to be remain private then. Basically. So, some would say yeah. <laughs> There's not that many successful ad tech startups. Right. Um, one is that's done quite well. It's going to be called Trade Desk. Mm-hmm. Um, Literally called the trade desk. Right. And, uh, TTD is a stock symbol. They they have done very very well, but even past three three weeks, their stock has dropped significantly. Mm. Um, I'm very bullish. I think it'll, it'll jump right back up. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but they're they're part of the the few that have been very right. successful. Yeah. And what kind of profit margins are they making right now? I think it's still thirty to forty percent, if I remember. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. They're good. Because uh-huh. if they do one thing, they do it really well. Right. And their 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 solution, not to speak for them too much, is they they empower agencies to do their mm-hmm. job really well, mm-hmm. and that's it. Right. They don't do anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, I see. I see. And then, um, yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. I mean, I I, I didn't know these, these yeah. things. Yeah. I mean, I, I think what what the general public and why you, not to go too far down this rabbit hole, yeah. I guess it's it's like that the, that one dollar that I was just giving you as an example, the the reality is that. 30 to 40% of that goes to one or two major players. Oh. So a lot of the, these other companies that, that are there are basically trying to capitalize on the rest. Right. And, and those two major players, you could probably guess, mm. um, Google's one of them, yeah, yeah. Amaz- uh, Facebook is the other, right. and then Amazon's the next one yeah, <laughs> in yeah, that yeah. order. Right, right. So when, when people and governments talk about our industry or they're trying to scrutinize it in Europe or the US, yeah. they, they talk more about a, like a duopoly effect yeah. where too much money is going to one player. Yeah. Um, but these players, they provide tremendous value also. Yeah. Right? Like, you couldn't survive without Instagram or Google search. Right. Right? So yeah. it's, it's a hard balance for them to figure out what to do about this or to right. do anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's no, there's not, the thing, thing about their business model is, like, you know, they, they can scale so fast yep. with the network effect. And even if you come up with a new Google, new Facebook, new whatever. It's it, hard to be a, a challenger. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 the nature of their business is to create themselves into a, a monopoly. Right, so like right. You know, that's free, that's capitalism in general, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they they would argue probably that they're not yeah. and they they have they have data to show that the other yeah. way too. Like it's hard yeah, for me yeah. to say. I mean, yeah, if you if you compare them as a you know if you're a search engine company, then you know you might not be the biggest, or yeah. it's not a monopoly. But if you look at the ads and all that stuff, then yes, you you probably not you know the biggest one either, right? So it's it's hard to even though they are, it's like very hard to justify them uh, numerically. But they're, they're very good at what they do. They're very smart. <laughs> yeah. They have the best data. Yeah. They know what you're what you're gonna search. Yeah. It's at the point now where you start typing, they kind of predict what you're gonna start searching. Yeah, yeah right? exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, when when you're on Facebook, you're also on Instagram. Yeah. It's always tied to your mobile phone. It's right. also tied to you than your yeah. your computer. Right. So they have an identity about you. Right. They know you. Yeah. Right. So yeah, a lot more than the apartment your mother does. Yeah. Right? I mean they Very know where much. you're going. Yeah. They, they know not that they're they're categorizing them, but they think you are your, your locations and stuff like that is also being yeah. like tracked and profiled. Yeah. So your, your telco, for example, probably knows more about you than you probably right. realize. Yeah. Um, and they themselves have started their own advertising units as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a, it's a very pivotal time. Yeah. That's why people are doing this. All right, right. Yeah. yeah. And then and then you know what are these guys? You know, I, I know that they just want to do like ads or whatever because mm-hmm. that's a business model. And and uh, in the past they tried to do a subscription model when they first started and oh, like the publishers, right? Yeah. yeah, and they they failed. They, they nobody wanted to pay, so they they switched to the ad model. But I mean, the thing is like you know, but you know that that kind of model just kind of fell into their hands, right? I mean, or it's what the, lab, it's right? the only thing they've ever known. Yeah. And so if you look at like what BuzzFeed did or some other, mm-hmm. they try to do branded content, right? Right, where they would work with. You know, Sapporo, and, and be yeah. like, listen, we're gonna incorporate this. Is not a, this is not branded content, but you yeah. know, we're gonna make sure this is in front of your people when you when yeah. you when you view this, right? Right, and it could be as, as simple as that, or something more organic, where right. you know, you're not even aware that the brand is part of it. Yeah. Um. So, like, if you're watching Stranger Things, the new season, um, I think it was Burger King mm-hmm. was a big sponsor, right? And Pepsi, uh-huh. and, and it always appeared. Right, yeah, but they never yeah. said anything. Right. So like, there's things like that. That's the alternative way to make money. Right. And that's where we're starting to see more people explore. Uh-huh. 
I heard that there's more in like in games as well. Right? Yeah, I mean, gaming, is, yeah, yeah. e-gaming is, is a massive opportunity for brands. Right. Um, you have KFC that's like in China that does really, really interesting things. Mm. They, you know, design chat um, like score bots that can predict if something's good, who's going to win ahead of time. Right. And right. have a coupons for the gamers while they're sitting there in China mm. to buy and have some KFC delivered to them. Wow. Right. So that, that, that's it's really about the the attention economy. Right. That's what publishers need. Right. Um, and nothing is it's not a very healthy situation when you have publishers going out of business. Yeah. So either they're banding together and trying to mm. fight the good fight together to, against yeah. the duopoly that that's occurring. Yeah. Um, or they're coming with innovative ways to to mm. to monetize. Right. Uh, and, and so what what do you do uh, in in this kind of yeah? Like, so <laughs> <laughs> how do I know so much about all this stuff? Yeah. Um, so I'm um, iPod Web uh, essentially with my. my I've now been for about three years, yeah. um, and then now about ten plus years in the programmatic industry. Yeah. As um, we're an engineering company, mm-hmm. so we help build a lot of these existing platforms that trade with each other. Okay, you know we don't take a position in media; we're a neutral source. Right. Um, we we like solving interesting problems, mm-hmm. be it either for publishers that are trying to monetize money, or, or advertisers or agencies mm-hmm. trying to be more efficient with their money. All right. And those are the two, uh, the two. Uh, principles essentially, mm-hmm. and everything else we, we help with. Right. Um, so we build platforms. So be it mm-hmm. anything that ends with a P, which right. is very very boring, but <laughs> kind of tricky, right. um, or helping evolve the conversations with people who have good data. How do you monetize it mm-hmm. or not? Mm-hmm. What should you do or not? Mm-hmm. How do you protect it? Mm-hmm. Uh, is it worthwhile to do this or maybe just do something else with your business? Mm-hmm. So a lot of it we spend on doing consultancies, um, consult engagements, or building the next generation. So building mm-hmm. when you're walking by a billboard. We've helped build. We've built build those platforms that change based right. off some behavior you've done, uh-huh. or when you're watching TV, we know you're a family of four potentially. Right. A different ad for you right. versus me watching it. Right. As a, as a dual income, no kids huh. household. Wow. So yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. And we've been around about 18 years, right. um, but very much behind the scenes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so you supply these like you know technologies to these platforms, basically. We've helped the back end yeah. engineering. Yeah. Right. The right. secret partners, uh-huh. essentially. Okay. Yeah. Right. I see. Yeah. And and you know I went through your website and it says like AI. It might be a bit stuff, vague, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but um, how is like AI or like five G gonna gonna you know like uh, improve uh, improve it? yeah or, or make, five, our, make our world? Yeah, I'm not I'm, I'm not too. I, I you know I, I read enough about five G. I still don't. The ramifications are still unknown, right? It just right. essentially means things load much faster. faster yeah. Or you don't have like uh, it was F one here on Sunday and Saturday, right? Mm-hmm. You couldn't use your phone right. if you were in the pit. Like there's no everyone was sending. Videos to Instagram yeah, and failing yeah. or WhatsApp, and so 5G in theory would alleviate that because mm-hmm. they can make it yeah, handle yeah, sure. the the bandwidth. Um, yeah. My prediction it just makes it makes your decisions of when you're showing being served and that much faster. Yeah, um, but it's already so fast. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really know the, the full ramifications yeah, yeah. of that. Right. Um, AI is a, it's a buzzword. Yeah. Right. I mean it's a it's not the right term either. Yeah. Um, we we prefer to use the word machine learning when we yeah, can. Yeah, sure. And because there's different components of it. Mm-hmm. You know, machine learn machines that learn. If you're reading certain content, you know what what's what's actually being said on the content, mm. right? So they can classify that. So mm. are you reading a, an article? You might be on a news site, mm. but the actual content might change, right? You might be yeah. reading travel news, right, or sports news, but yeah. they don't. It's hard to understand that. Yeah. Um, yeah. or learning of like different languages and translating that as well, uh-huh. um, or what you're doing on, on different sites, so, right. and be and be able to predict it. Uh-huh. So it may be that you may never click on an ad, yeah. But if you, maybe if I show you the right ad. At the right moment, yeah. right for the right thing you're looking for, you might engage. Right. And how do we? How do they predict that? Right. And that's that's the holy grail. Right. Uh, hmm. so. Interesting. And how did you get into this? Accidental. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to write jingles. Right. So I don't know how. I, I can't explain to my parents what I do, which is uh, right. the challenge. Uh-huh. Um, my my friends always joke that you 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 basically stalk people for a living. I'm like, no, I just empower the <laughs> <laughs> good decisions, right? <laughs> right. Um, yeah, literally just fell into it. Very, very lucky right. to be at the right place. I worked for an ad network first, uh-huh. and then kind of fell into this as, as I moved on. Right. And then got recruited to come to this side of the world. Right. Uh, so uh, interesting. And, and but but you did work for an ad company, right? So yeah. You were interested in it in the beginning. Yeah, I, I was, and then somehow yeah. got much further around down the yeah. rabbit hole of technology. Right, um, right. And then realized that the problems that are more interesting for me as a person, as a company, is really business problems. Right. Like, why are broadcasters failing? Uh-huh. Why are they acquiring companies? Right. And you have AT&T and Comcast and these really big maniacs, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Verizon, for example, they spent billions and billions of dollars on ad tech acquisitions mm-hmm. in the past five years. Yeah. Very few of them have been very successful. Right. Right. You have you had that AOL and Yahoo thing, yeah, and then yeah. you had, you know, you have Singtel buying company. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's very hard to find good success cases. Yeah. But they're all trying to do it because they want to compete and stay right. relevant. 
uh-huh. uh, because the world has changed so much in right. seven years or so. And why are these ad tech companies like failing? I mean, I, I don't get it. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, is, it, is it that they can't capture the data well? Or no, I, I mean, if forty percent goes to two players, everyone's fighting for yeah. everything else, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the the past ten years or so, a lot of companies raised a lot of money. Mm. And when you raise a lot of money, you raise a lot of expectations. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's only X amount that's going to be that they can all survive in, right? Mm. So either you merge or you, you, some fail and some pivot and right. find new things that they're much more interesting in. Right. So as, as many failures is probably equal number of successes. Mm. Um, but, but no one talks about successes. Right. Or no one remembers yeah. the successes, yeah. right? Like, right. Uh, so that, I think that's uh, the perspective. Right. Um, our, our goal really is to help build out and, and keep an ecosystem vibrant. Mm. Um, but the, the challenges are definitely, right. have, have come out. Right, because because you're, you're you're actually helping these ag tech companies, right? Yeah, Basically. I mean we 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 help them exist yeah. or, or, or solve problems. Right. Or but but a lot of them are failing as well at the same time. Some, some yeah. yeah, but we try to pick very careful who we pick right, <laughs> with right. projects we bring on. Right, um, and also I mean the end day, like we want to keep the internet free. Right, right. We want to make sure publishers stay in business. Uh-huh. Like that, that's like without good news and without good journalism, there's no right. like it's. Then you just have advertising, right? right without good content, mm-hmm. and then that's a challenge, right? It's like, right, but you know, you say like you know you want to keep internet free. Yeah, it is free because you know we we. But well, subsidized. Yeah, yeah. subsidized, exactly. right? Basically, but you don't want yeah. you don't want fifty subscriptions. Right. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Not yet. Yeah. But yeah. Well, what do you mean by not yet? I mean, Apple Apple News has their own thing, right? So mm-hmm. they're also trying to do their subscription model. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where but they then take a percentage of the, mm-hmm. they become the gatekeeper for news. Yeah. On your phone. Right. right, but they're taking maybe I think twenty, thirty percent of the ad revenue, right, just to be that mm-hmm. gatekeeper, right. So the publishers are already losing money or not yeah. making as much money as they used to, and they're being taken over by these guys. Oh, they're just yeah, they're yeah. controlling access. So yeah. it comes down to who has access, right? Um, are you getting your new your news from Google? Are you getting most people their news comes from Facebook? Yeah. So every time Facebook makes an algorithm change, uh-huh. these companies crater, right? Because they're they're riding high, they're doing well, they're they're yeah. their content's going viral, it's being shared, yeah. and then something changes. Mm-hmm. And that they, they lose 30, 40, 50 percent of their audiences overnight sometimes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huh. And, and, and what is your view on like having all these duopolies, uh, or not all these, the, this duopoly uh-huh. around, right? I mean, you know, even for us, I mean, you know, we, we live in, in Google, right? Yep. We lived in Facebook, we live in uh, Instagram, and those are the only tools that we have, yep. unfortunately, right? Uh, it would be great to have, th- there's a lot of different options. Uh, I mean, to there, do there are a lot of, they're yeah. not mainstream options. Yeah. You have to try yeah. harder. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I use uh, the Brave browser. Do you? Right? Okay. So, yeah. so, so you, you know, their mission is not yeah. have any ads. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I love it, right? Yeah. Because, uh, cause, like, you know, I don't want to be always treated as a consumer, right? Yep. And you know, let's say I'm going to a business meeting. How did you find out about Brave? Oh, I'm in a, I'm in a blockchain. Tech. Yeah, so yeah. I'm so, curious. <laughs> so that's, exactly, that's, that's, right? So I, I've been always the blockchain is all about you know keeping your data to yourself, right? right? I mean, well, not it's not all about it, but you know that's that's part of it. Or trackable, uh, yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you know, and I was looking for other options because I don't want Google to show me all these uh, ads to me, right? And and I don't even really care. And I want to make my own decision what to what to what to buy, right? And that that was a part of my question. I was like, is that where is that free will uh, for me, right? <laughs> like, you know, I'm trying to make my own decisions. I don't want to be like told that you should buy this. Well, no, no, but, one, no one tells you to type Google.com as your search engine. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I just wanted exactly, exactly. So I wanted to have the most neutral option yeah. that I can have as an internet, even though you know there's really not nothing really neutral anymore. Um, but you know, but at least you know I don't have to see ads. Uh, when I'm trying to do some work, right? Like I'm not a consumer 24 seven, right? I'm, I'm, I'm working. I have to like concentrate on doing things. I don't need to see ads. Right. And but those ads um, keep everything free. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, I understand. And, and that's why I could do my job. That's right? why I, I always laugh. A, when I was speaking with some millennials right now. Yeah. I forgot to ask them, but I'm, I'm assuming yeah. they probably work in advertising and they probably have, I had to get maybe 10% of them have some sort of level of ad blocking. <laughs> on, yeah. their, on their thing, yeah. right? And you're, well, you're also hurting yourself. Yeah, yeah. No, I yeah. understand. I totally understand. But what do you... Okay, so let's ch- let's change that. So if, if it were to be a subscription model mm-hmm. for using internet, um, and I've never done the, you know, calculation, maybe I should try to do that. Yep. Um, but um, how much do you, how much money do you think I would have to pay for uh, to, for this sub- uh, to subscribe yep. to Google to use it uh, with, with no ads? 
that would I don't think that would be their business model. <laughs> yeah, I know, but but I just want to know, like you know, at the current level, you know, like you know, what it would, what would it be like ten bucks uh, per month, or oh, would it be know. like? Yeah. But, but like if you look at broadcasters, right? Like yeah. if you're a cable cutter, yeah, um, I don't know if you pay for cable or not, but no, I, I don't. Know, uh, I do because it comes packaged. Right. Right? I don't. I've never turned on my cable. Right. I don't. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I don't know the remotes. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah. But they, they didn't estimate in the U.S. very recently because all these new things are coming yeah. out that you have. Um, Disney Plus, yeah. you have Hulu, you have Netflix. Mm. I mean, there's, there's Southeast Asia version of those also. Yeah, yeah, sure. They said it's about ninety dollars US if mm. you subscribe to everything mm. in the for all those those mm. stream OTT streaming per services. Month. Yeah, per yeah, month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So there's no ads there. Yeah. <laughs> so somewhere around there. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, if, you, if you had to use a benchmark for where you're actually a, a fair value exchange of content. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. If right. what's your value exchange? You're just accessing websites. Yeah. Right. And then what most websites start playing around with is some sort of paywall. Mm-hmm. Right, where you can access ten web ten ten articles or something, right. and then you pay after that. Yeah, um, but even then, most people aren't happy about that. Right. Um, yeah. What more websites are probably to do is they're just trying to unify and work with their competitors. Right. To try to do better with their their advertising opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still very much a, a challenge. Yeah. yeah. What someone's I don't know. I'd probably pay. I wouldn't even know what I would pay for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, like, it's not that as, as I was going to or alluding to. Like, like you know, let's say I'm doing a presentation in front of a compu- uh, a, a, um, a a client, and and I have to go through these slides and everything, and then these like ads pop up. You know, like I'm, well, I'm ad, a, no no ads pop up anymore, right? They're usually on the sides or yeah, invisible. Yeah, well, you know, like move from like PowerPoint and say, okay, let's look at this. Mm-hmm. You know, and and, and inter- internet and it'll show you like this this company, and they'll show you the you know you some some whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But then you know, if we, if a, if a, if a ad comes up and it says, hey. You know, look at these hot, like, you know, Colombian chicks on Pornhub. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't want to show, uh, you know, I don't want that to happen. Right? You're so, of the environment. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so, you know, like, can it, can it be smart enough that it, it could say, okay, well, this guy is like working right now. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and you could follow it because you, you know that that guy is not actually searching for like, you know, looking at Amazon and like, yep. you know, on Facebook or whatever. And he's actually like, you know, trying to analyze certain data of, of a, of a, you know, government uh, report or something, whatever. And, um, you know, so can it like shut it off at that point and then afterwards show them like a shitload of ads later? I mean, like, you know, yeah, it, I, I think it's really about showing less ads, making sure they're yeah, more relevant. Right. Um, I, you, you may notice if it, now next time you're on a website, yeah. if you look at the far right of a banner ad, yeah. there's actually an X button. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, and you could do a drop down and say, why am I seeing this ad? Yeah. And a good site and a good creative will actually say, you're seeing this ad because of this data points. Because mm-hmm. um, now they actually have to tell you why you're seeing that. Yeah. And then you can say, oh, this ad isn't good for me or not. Right. Same thing as even on Instagram or, or when you're when you're scrolling, mm-hmm. you can say, oh, this ad isn't relevant or it's yeah. annoying me. Or so the yeah. algorithms are being trained. Right, right. Um, like, like you would train you know, anything else mm-hmm. like, to do a certain behavior. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the days of pop-ups and all that, because we're, yeah. we're, we're, we remember how bad yeah, it used yeah, to yeah, be, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. you know, that stuff is only gone. Those, those are like really shady companies that made a lot of money. But the, yeah. the, the browsers and stuff like that mm-hmm. are... Are um, they're correcting that? Yeah, and yeah. honestly, a lot of the browsers are following some middle ground between what Brave does, mm-hmm. which is absolute. Yeah, and then you have Am- uh, so you have Apple saying the other same very s- somewhat similar position, saying mm-hmm. no more cookies mm-hmm. at all. Right, and so they've full yeah, yeah, they're going yeah, full yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. and then Google's also reevaluating their mm-hmm. their positions mm-hmm. and and Firefox as well. Yeah, uh, I'm not an expert on this, but that's the general yeah, trend. Is that yeah, that? Yeah. Yes, I know. What is that balance? Yeah. Of, of, of right tracking or not tracking yeah but it makes it makes your job harder as well right and then to make it more precise yeah i right? mean if i was on the buy side yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. i'm lucky enough where i get to see yeah, everything yeah, exactly right, um right. essentially money it's an investment right mm-hmm. and, and when you're when you're giving your i'm a brand and yeah. i'm a cmo my ceo mm-hmm. gives you 10 million dollars to spend a year or mm-hmm. 50 billion if you know 30 percent of that's going to waste because mm-hmm. not the right people mm-hmm. and then another percentage is going to fraud because mm-hmm. there's some very bad actors in between mm-hmm. that's very hard to audit mm-hmm. right then you have to get a lot smarter with the actual 50 percent is actually working for you mm-hmm. right and so that's that's a challenge mm-hmm. an opportunity for companies to solve mm-hmm. and so that's what a lot of the new ad tech companies coming they're trying to solve making mm-hmm. sure that when you spend money it's the right place right um, people have tried to do blockchain in advertising okay right it's failed for the most part yeah. and it may get better again yeah. prefacing um because the set the, the transactions that occur in programmatic mm-hmm. happen too fast there's blockchain is yeah. not, not designed not that, for reconciliation no. right it's like not. like we 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 look at i don't know 17 20 50 billion sometimes a year or a quarter trillions of bid requests mm-hmm. or opportunities for ads mm-hmm. right? and we're just one player 
Yeah. So how do you audit that and put a blockchain? Yeah, it, you can. And there yeah, are companies yeah, that do yeah, exist, yeah, yeah. but they, they haven't really scaled. Mm-hmm. But they, they do. They're trying to focus on mm-hmm. this. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I never really understood the blockchain part in the advertising. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really. It's kinda... it's. I get why because yeah. again they, there are these bad actors and you just sure. want to make sure a dollar here gets at least seventy five cents mm-hmm. to the the person you want the the website yeah. or the. But then there's you know it's very hard to to yeah. implement it. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Brave browser has this like mm-hmm. um, you know functionality where you can actually sell your data yep. for in returns for and, and that's the a value the, exchange, yeah, yeah, exactly. And and how do you think that's going to you know like, do you think that's going to be like the norm going uh, for or no? I'm a bit con- I'm a country you know, against this. Right. People just want to access their their videos. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. There's seven billion people in the world. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now no one really thinks about the implications yeah. of of. of if I'm doing X, Y, unless they feel violated. Yeah. Once that trust is gone, yeah, maybe someone will ask questions mm-hmm. or install ad blockers. But people install right. ad blockers in Asia at least because they want they want to access their YouTube videos really fast. Yeah. yeah <laughs> or they or they want to pay for data to be used for loading ads because mm-hmm. sometimes those files can be heavy. Right. Or take up a lot of bandwidth. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. um, so th- they're doing things for very different reasons. Yeah. You yeah. Know, like to ask them to be all oh, suddenly mature enough and sophisticated enough. Yeah. Fifty cents right. for what? I don't know what that like. You wouldn't yeah, know yeah, how exactly. to how do I, how do I value that? Mm. Like, I wouldn't know what I pay for a paywall. Mm. Um, I know how much I wouldn't pay for certain sites. Yeah, uh, but I don't pay for any paywalls right yeah. now. But I'm tempted to sometimes. Right. Uh, yeah. But I mean, you know, the, but the governments are like heading towards like more privacy, you know, protection. Yeah. Uh, and, and 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 it seems like you know every person I talk to generally is like they don't really give a shit about their privacy, <laughs> privacy right? I mean, you know, they they they're just kind of like giving up, right? I mean, it's not like you know they didn't care from the beginning. Maybe they did care. I mean, but, we, we grew know, up but, a different generation, right? Yeah. Like if we were our grandparents who had to live through world wars yeah. and stuff like that, like yeah. they have a different view on government and yeah, and, yeah. and the private sector having to access right. to data. Mm-hmm. I think my generation or even younger, they understand the value exchange. I give up data to access sites for free mm-hmm. or for videos for free or whatever, mm-hmm. or, you know, or being profiled. Yeah. Um, what they don't want then is crappy ads yeah. or ads at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. So that that's their expectation. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that that's the, that's the pushback. Right. Um, and yes, the government should have you know, some sort of like common framework mm. but it's very hard to establish a framework that works in malaysia or thailand yeah. or singapore right. or the u.s or, or the eu yeah, yeah. the eu passed gdpr yeah. may 25th last year mm-hmm. right and that's what the most strictest version of, of that and they're they're, yeah. they're going to pass more legislation as well mm-hmm. but that also caused some ad tech companies in europe to, to give up and leave yeah and shut down You're right they said like we, we can't be compliant to this or it's not worth the fines mm. um, let's focus our business elsewhere yeah um, and so the things are changing, mm-hmm. maybe not as fast enough for some people. And, and yeah. if you follow Brave, they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a very radi- They had a very explosive talk about th- this value exchange. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. But I, I don't think it'll be mainstream. Right, right. I think people want free content. Yeah. <laughs> they want relevant ads. Right. And that that's it. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. But I mean, you know, I guess you know the government's like heading towards that way. Most people don't really care. Um, but you know, it, it does it does make your your job. You know, uh, uh, not that they care. They want better ads, right? Yeah. So they want better ads. Governments uh, want to control that so that, you know, people are not giving up way too much privacy um, for, you know, digital ads, yeah, right? But, but and governments are in the business of collecting data on, on, yeah, on their people, they're, right? They're the, <laughs> biggest, they're the biggest gangsters in the world, right? So, you know, that's that's their job, um, and they do it legally. Yeah, <laughs> they, they set the laws. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they want to be the only owner of those mm-hmm. those. So, uh, there's well, the, there, I mean, there like, that Black Mirror episode, right? Yeah, where where they, yeah. the, the social network knew more about the person in the episode yeah, than the totally. actual government. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, like, if you look at China, I mean, like, they owned, um, you know, like most of WeChat, they own like Alipay, and the government owns, you know, your financial data. Well, I, right? I don't right? Know, they, they have influence, maybe? I, I don't know. The <laughs> I'll say own. <laughs> <laughs> your words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my words. I'll say own. Um, but, um, you know, the thing is, you know, in in because uh, you know it depends on countries. So the Chinese people probably are used to, mm-hmm. um, you know, being censored in that sense, right? By the by the government, They're being told you can't do this, you can't do that, and there's a lot of restrictions. Where you know, let's say in the U.S., you know, everybody thinks that they're free, yep. uh, which they're not. But like you know, that that's well, what's a free twist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But there's an uh, idea that you know you have to be free, uh, and uh, and then you know, the, I guess the government is trying to protect so that you know people are. Um, you know, having private lives, not being monitored by everybody. Europeans much stricter on that. I think Australia Cause, also cause, has because they come from like a legacy of a war, Wars, and, and yeah, like that, right? exactly. That's the yeah, mentality. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so so how does how does like you know so with these kind of privacy protections in mm-hmm. place? I mean, how does how does you know? I guess you know, ads. How get does the internet better? stay yeah, yeah. free? It's, it's 
there's predictions that we might go backwards in, in, in some of the technologies used. So right. instead of audiences or data profiles existing, yeah. um, it might just be contextual. Yeah. So you're reading a sports article or a news article, and that's the most we can know from you. Yeah. And very high level versus you went to four different stores and did X, Y, Z. Yeah. It's a different profile. Yeah. And it may be that that, that may go away. Mm -hmm. Or you may end up in a different scenario where the bigger players become the source for truth for data. Yeah. Um, the duopolies of the world, where mm -hmm. they just the Amazon's and Google's, they just become the source, mm -hmm. and they just figure out what the profiles are, yeah. um, which doesn't may may not benefit people, yeah. um, or nothing will change, and it's too early, right, right. <laughs> um, because the, the laws how they're written are not written by advertising experts, right? Of course. Right, and and even in UK, there's there's trade organizations that are saying the, the opposite that the entire mechanism mm -hmm. isn't compliant. Right, that's a that's a far that's a, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a different view than just saying don't yeah. collect this data, right, or must be deleted or must be stored in a different way or you must right. have this regulator in time. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's very chaotic right. if you had to look at the sector. Yeah, and, um, and probably like every country is going to come up with something. Yeah, literally Thailand, literally. Thailand um, I think, has is passing or passed where if you are found in violation, you can be um, criminally prosecuted, mm. right? Which is a very different thing than being yeah, like, yeah, like, I don't know. Wow, so. yeah, yeah. And, and Singapore has a very good, I think very fair, um, it's called, I think, the PDPA, mm -hmm. um, which has... Establish all this Malaysia has something very similar as well. Yeah. Um, everyone's thinking about it because it also affects news and the idea of fake news and mm. and and quality journalism, mm. right? So that's why it's all all yeah. coming to forefront. Right, right. Uh, yeah, and then but uh, then you know, um, but but without these in place, yeah. and in, in an ideal world, you know, where's where's like digital as can be, you know, as opposed to where where it could be, um, but you know, sorry. So, where 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 it can be without mm -hmm. all these like data protection um, laws in place, you know, like is it is it is it going to be that you know I just wake up in the morning and then you know boom you know they tell <laughs> everything that I need to know to, to to do today, you know like, all the. Things I mean, I what buy. what an advertiser really wants is show you that commercial and then yeah. from your remote you hit buy, right? <laughs> and you're right. we're pretty much there because our remote is our our yeah, mobile phone. Sure. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. It's like we're we're probably like six seven years away from that being the full reality. Right. Right. And that's why you yeah. have brands that just they call them direct to consumer brands, mm. right? That are just marketing directly to the consumer, yeah, yeah, right. but they're using it because they have good data. So like in the right. U.S. there was one called. A dollar shave club, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, right? Sure. They send you a, a shaver, a razor mm -hmm. once a month, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. they bought for a billion dollars yeah. from Procter and Gamble, for sure. yeah, yeah, because they had all the data and they knew all these men's addresses, right. and they had a habit, yeah, right. And so the, I, I don't know, data will always be. I think it makes us more responsible, right? Has it gone too far? Maybe, yeah. Um, has it has some unintended consequences? Yeah, right. certainly, yeah, for sure. But it's better than. Me buying an ad in a magazine and hoping for the best, right? <laughs> and just like, oh, yeah. things happen. Yeah, right? so. but I mean, you know, like you know, sh shaving or something. All, all these like daily stuff is fine. I just said at the beginning, but like you know, how do we weed out the bad actors in this? Yep. And that, that's what I'm most concerned about. Yeah, like, I mean, the industry is trying to self-regulate before the regulation yeah. comes, like any right. in, like any industry. Right. Um, this wasn't a big deal because it was it was only a few billion dollar industry. Now it's hundreds yeah. of billions of dollars. Yeah. Google made this year more than a hundred billion dollars. Yeah. Um, this year alone, yeah, yeah. one year. <laughs> so the next closest is, is maybe forty billion mm -hmm. and thirty billion, and it just cascades from there. Yeah, right. So the the money that's going with this is the norm. Yeah. Right. This ten years ago when I started this, I was mm. I was the outside looking in. Now yeah. I'm the mainstream, essentially. Right. right? This is sure. it. Um, and now it's touching our billboard ads. It's touching our television ads. Yeah. Um, when we're watching TV, you're going to get a different experience from what your children are seeing. Yeah. Should children be seeing ads? No. So Google, yeah. Google finally now just removed ads on YouTube yeah. for children content. Right, right, right. So there, are, we yeah. are correcting, mm -hmm. maybe not fast enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it also it, it, it's a it's a balance, right? Right, right, right. But then now, but just going back, like, how do they even know that you know I'm watching it versus my wife when mm -hmm. we're, we're logged in the same account? Yep. And so they get they get it wrong. Yeah, <laughs> right. Essentially. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So that's why we have two different accounts in the yeah, household. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but how does it even get smarter beyond that, right? Yeah. So, like you know, or even like you know, uh, maybe I'm like uh, one time I was I was looking for a place to rent mm -hmm. in Singapore. And then and I, I go on to Facebook and it already show, shows me yeah. those ads already you, instantly. You, you got on right? that site, they yeah. dropped a cookie on you. Yeah, exactly. That cookie is tied to your Facebook identifier. Mm -hmm. um, so they know anytime you log into Facebook, but yeah. be it on your mobile phone or your computer, yeah. you have a connection, that right. identity yeah. set. Mm -hmm. And then now they sh and now that advertiser is going to bid on you right. to show you that, that, that right. ad for that listing. Yeah. So, yeah. so in, in 99 Co. in Singapore, yeah. they just launched their... Yesterday, the day before, their own self-service um, tool for brokers. 
to say if someone looked at my listing, I want to sell. I'm going to log in as a broker, a real estate broker, sorry, right. right, and pay for ads. I'm just going to put my credit card in, pay fifty wow. bucks, and I want wow. to make sure they're always seeing that 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 apartment in Novena. Right. So it just stays top in mind. Right. And you're like, you know, I'm really Dang. interested in the Novena apartment. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> so that's the free will to, to right. going back full circle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So that's the world we're entering. Yeah. In. Oh, but what about like you know? But I could I could buy something, right? And they show me the same thing on yeah. On, so that's on bad advertising. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like because it's hard to know when you actually go to the store. Right. The only ones that really can do it is like Amazon. Yeah. Right. They'll know if you go pick it up. Yeah. Or if you so actually purchased it. Purchased yeah. it. Or so not, they right? stop. Yeah, they yeah. they can really they can do. We call it attribution. Mm -hmm. Have you bought it or not? Right. And sometimes we get it, a lot of people get it wrong. Right. Yeah, so that's a, the challenge. Yeah. But if, would you want them to know sometimes? No, <laughs> or like uh, if, if you use your loyalty card at Watson, right? Right, then they yeah. know. And so there's there's ways you can get very yeah. clever. Yeah, yeah. With this. yeah. You have a Coles in the U.S. I'm sorry, I'm the Coles in Australia, mm -hmm. right? They personalize their shopper the the the, the, the coupons they send to you in the mail mm -hmm. based off, or they used to do. I'm sorry, I could be wrong about this. Mm -hmm. um, based on what you purchased, right? Right. So if you're buying milk this time, or mm -hmm. Make sure you get that coupon for milk, mm -hmm. and then when you go in and when you go to the physical store, yeah. you're putting your card in front of it. And right. They're able to match it back to what what they've right. sent you. Yeah, yeah. So it's all about that attribution loop. Uh -huh. right. Yeah. right. And how's that get even getting better? Like, I mean, how, how do you actually, you know, program it to, to make it even smarter and smarter? I mean, and that's what the machine learning is doing, right? right. So every time there's a new signal, uh -huh. in, in simple terms, right? right. It's, it's learning that behavior. Uh -huh. And so, like, if you were looking at a car online, you then go to the BMW dealership. You have your mobile phone with you. Mm -hmm. Your mobile phone knows you're in the longitude latitude of a car yeah. dealership. Mm -hmm. That's a signal. Yeah. And so they can maybe take credit for that. Right. Or your your phone might be able to hear um, some audio background noise in the car dealership. Right. There's a company that's doing this now. Right. And they're able to hear. And you can't hear it by your, your physical ears. Right. But it's a signal that says, oh, I've, you've seen this ad. You've also now been to the car dealership. Damn. And, 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 try and, right. and, and close that loop. Right. But it also, like, you know, I mean, I'm going to state the office, but it does freak, freak oh, me yeah, out. Oh, right? yeah, I know, but like, I, when I say it out loud, it does. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. I mean, that's what's happening in reality, right? And it's kind of freaky at the same time because, you know, great. If it if it's well intended, you know, great. If I mean, it's serendipitous, you know, yeah. you, you, it, good advertising is advertising you don't know happened. Mm -hmm. right? You didn't yeah, realize yeah. Why, like, why, right. we, why do we make the, the decisions we make. Yeah. They're unconscious. They're emotional right. decisions. Yeah. And that's all. Like, why am I going to buy that apartment in Novena? Yeah. I mean, I even realize that's what's happening. Right. But I've seen that same listing five yeah. times. <laughs> and you're like, oh shit, it's in high demand. Yeah. I need to act fast. Yeah. I mean, whatever, right? So yeah, yeah. We, we, we make illogical decisions, but no one mm. likes being pried on. Right. To, to exactly. what I think what you're what you're saying, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, because like, you know, fine. If, if they're showing me stuff that I really like, and and that's fine. But like, if they're they're starting to show me stuff that I don't really care about, obviously, you know, that's bad, bad, bad advertising, right? And then you feel like you're you're being followed and. You know, and, 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 and yeah, exactly, and, and get all the and negative emotions. But you know, if it's always like precise, and it was like, God damn, thank it's you. It's a balance. Like, yeah. it's, it's an art, yeah. right? So right. You, you can get really creepy, right? Right. Um, Target, for example, if you read some literature, they were in the U.S. Um, they were able to figure out a woman was pregnant in her household before right. she told anyone, because <laughs> she started buying um, certain types of creams and moisturizer, right? Um, and started sending coupons to the household, right? And then the the, the father of the house, his teenage daughter was yeah, pregnant, yeah, yeah. Um, got really upset and angry. Uh -huh. And then complained, and then found out that his, his daughter was actually really? indeed pregnant. Yeah, so you can get fuck you. Know. <laughs> there, there's balances to all this, right. right? It's good advertisers, good agencies, are run by people. Right. People should know what to do with the technologies, yeah. and and yeah. that that's what I, have. I as a somewhat optimist. Right. I I believe that we can course correct. Yeah. Um. Because to your point, it can get yeah. very. Yeah. It, yeah. It no. Very the creepy. thing is, you know. I, I I don't mind great adver advertising, right? Yeah. I mean, nobody does, but like, you know, but the thing is, uh, I guess that all that data is like centralized in, you know, your du du duopolies, right? Or wherever. A, a large like percentage yeah, of these. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and other players, yeah. Yes. And that, that's what I always had a problem with, right? And it's not about like having like three or four more companies uh, that, that are, everything to me should be, in my sense, you know, owned by, you know, not owned by any centralized mm -hmm. organization, right? That that's the what the that's what the belief I, of the, the company. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. I mean, and that that's where I come from. Is like, you know, I want that to be decentralized, right? Like, I want I want it to be somewhere else that is not owned by Google, yep. fucking Facebook, and and they know everything that I do, right? That that's the part that or will do me. or yeah. potentially do. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like who knows, right? Because these companies are not, um, you know, they're they're not uh, accountable. 
to anybody to what they do, right? I mean, they, I mean, they, they, get, the they get fined, they get government. I mean, but yeah, it's but whatever. It's, it's, it's a slap in the wrist, right? I mean, they don't give me shit. I mean, it's like, you know, this is cost of business, running a business and they keep going, right? Mm-hmm. And and that, that's what the, what the problem is, is that, you know, all these companies have no accountability whatsoever. And then, you know, one day, you know, somebody could just go, you know, and then turn off, turn turn the dial up, right? And then use it for something else, right? And I that, mean, that's te- what te- Technology always has unintended consequences. Yes. And then yeah. that, that's a challenge, right? You right. know, you, you, you saw what happened in New Zealand, stuff. that's unintended yeah. consequences, but it's probably predictable if someone would do yeah. something terrible and live stream yeah. it. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it is sad about it, but that's also, yeah. I don't think we can go to that world, your world, yeah. where I'm gonna have a profile and it's it's a bank of some sorts. Yeah. And then I can scrub it. Right. Um, I'd like to maybe, but yeah. it's, I think it's too hard. Right. There's too many people in the world. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> of course. But I mean, you know, but people um, should have the choice. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And 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 I think that's what the government need to focus on a lot more, right? Because it's not just about the the, the privacy of the data, because you know, yeah, that's important. But like, you know, it's more about the the concentration of that power. And as we just said before, you know, the governments love that concentration of power yep. to themselves, but, you know, they don't like it on someone else. Well, but I mean, that's why they're not very bullish on bitcoins and everything else. Right? Yeah. It's, it's a threat to the institutions. Yes, it's true. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's a it's a democratic voice. Yep. Right. And, and saying that, you know, it shouldn't be centralized in some place and then it should be free. Uh, and I think our data should be free mm-hmm. as well. Right. And 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 how, how can how can the world. Um, you know, be a little bit aligned with that concept. I mean, they they need to understand the wanting. basics, and unfortunately, like, my industry is very hard from an outsider mm-hmm. to immediately grasp. They, yeah. they they see they live through it. They see what they're shopping for, show them, follow them around. Yeah, right. But right. Th- maybe they, they don't understand the full mechanisms of yeah. how it happens. Right. Um, and and we hide behind acronyms and technologies and you know sure. and they platforms it, yeah. and stuff. We make it very obscure in yeah. some some respects. Yeah. Um, I think it, w- it would serve the greater good if everyone could digest this a little mm. bit mm. Uh, and make it more digestible. Because mm. then people can think about policies that are that are mm. fair. Because the, the ones who are actually really suffering are the publishers, mm. the people who create content, the journalists. Yeah. Right. Everyone else right. is everyone else is thriving. Yeah. Um, but they're the ones with revenue. They're the ones who are going out of business. Mm. That's why you see newspapers shutting down. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and without good journalism, without that, that's a, that's a real challenge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and especially with the, all this fake fake news that's going around as and well. The, and they're incentivized yeah. because the, the pipings exist for exploitation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, versus someone who's creating good content. Mm-hmm. And it's very hard for an algorithm to know that this is a fake news site because it has the word news in it, yeah. but it's not real news, right? right. <laughs> right. How does it know that WSJ is more authentic? Mm-hmm. And and some and now the algorithms are learning this. Mm-hmm. So again, <laughs> technology problems are being solved by technology, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know to what end. And how do you think the, you know, the Facebooks and the Googles can do better um, to you know, protect us, you know, in in, 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 in receiving these fake news, or um, you know, they always say, oh, they change their algorithms, but we don't even know what the, what the fuck they're they should doing. Be more, right? I, I mean, transparent, right? What what yeah. are the changes, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. If you if you're a private company providing you tip, it's a public service yeah. information, right, in news, yeah. but their position is that they're not media companies, yeah. So they're not they're not accountable the same way that we would we would hold New York Times mm-hmm. to. Right. But they are, and so people can argue the other way. They are media companies yeah. because that's where you get all your media. Yeah. So that they're they're able to to be on mm. both sides. Mm. Uh, it's just being yeah. more transparent. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. But mm. but do you t- do you see them actually going towards that direction? I think there's enough unbelief in firestorms and people like th- if they don't do it, mm. someone will make them do it, right? Right. Um, to some level, do we, they may not want to do. Right. So if you if you're more proactive with your legislation, like any other in- industry, yeah. right, um, the better off you are. Yeah. Um, versus and ar- someone independent arbitrarily deciding this, right? Right. So, mm. well, I mean, you know, because if they don't, I mean, and then, then and then Facebook is like kind of kind of trying to come out with their own like cryptocurrency and I mean, yeah. So what is that? Can you explain that to? Yeah. I don't. I don't understand that. Yeah. So so for my read from all that is that it, yes, Libra, it, right? Or it, like yeah, that? Libra. It's called Libra, and uh, it's not that Facebook uh, solely owns this currency, mm-hmm. right? But what they own is the touch point. Of of the so all the financial transactions that are going to happen mm-hmm. on uh, Libra is going to be owned by Facebook subsidiary, and but the cur- cryptocurrency itself, the network itself, is going to be run by. So if I use this to go to the grocery store, they know I go to the grocery store. Yeah, and I spent a hundred dollars. Yeah, exactly. 
then now you know why. Yeah. Because it makes our advertising much yeah, more exactly. better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everything feeds into that. <laughs> I right? buy milk. Yeah. And then, and, <laughs> and so, wine. <laughs> so not only they have our personal data, they're going to have fin- financial data as well, right? Interesting. Yeah. They're going back to the cryptocurrency. So the network itself is going to be decentralized, yep. you know, so, so, but it's all generally you know, American centric, a little bit of European mm-hmm. and Canadian companies in there, in there, but like, you know, generally uh, a lot of like um, your, your, your companies that I've heard of like Uber and yeah. MasterCard Visa and all, all those guys are in They'll there. Accept and, it, yeah. yeah. And then, and then if you pay a certain fee, then you can join the network and, yeah. and, and all that. But then that's not really the business angle for this, right? It's what, I, what, what we've been discussing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so that's what troubles me. Right. And, you know, while there should be, maybe that should be an opt providing, out. Yeah. If you use it or something like that or an opt in, like if things are more opt in versus opt out, more people would, mm-hmm. most people would be caring about it, and that's why mm-hmm. like, you know, GDPR in in in, in Europe is when yeah. you go to a website, they have to make it in very clean language mm-hmm. that a normal person, not me, who spends my life thinking about this, yeah. understands that they are going to be targeted potentially, mm-hmm. and this data will be used by this company for this end, mm-hmm. and that's when you, you get that pop up. Yeah, when when you when you go to or they don't yeah. track anything at all. They're like, yeah, yeah. It's fine. no, it, it should be like a cigarette box now, right? It, it shows you like a corroding <laughs> data collecting, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah it, corroding lung, and then you know like some you know <laughs> skull on it, saying you're gonna die if you smoke this thing, right? It should be almost the same. Where he said, I'm gonna collect your data, boom, and then you go with your terms and conditions, whatever. But you know that's that's the part they need need to do much better, you know, and and, and I don't see that they still ke- want to keep it in small you know, fonts, you know, put it in the back yeah. and then hide that shit, right? And so three hundred pages. Yeah, or exactly. Yeah. And nobody's gonna fucking they know that nobody's gonna read that, yeah, right? Yeah. So so I think that's the that's and that's what the language that, that's what the law in Europe was at least that first step yeah, of yeah. saying it has to be an understandable. Right. Yeah. Uh, whether the person reading understands it, that that's that's yeah. It. Well, that's that's their fault, right? It's the same <laughs> as the smokers as well. Like you know, you, you're gonna die from smoking this stuff, or you still smoke. I think this will be the, at least the, the most pivotal issue if, if you really want to go down for the next ten years. Yeah. In one shape or form, what yeah. is this? That is like why? Yeah. But unless you understand the the reasons behind it, and you're yeah. able to really astutely say, if I know how much someone's spending it somewhere, that's yeah. incredibly valuable. Yeah, totally. I mean, my, my your credit card companies have always been. St- in some ways, selling your data to third parties, mm. Mm. right? That that's your nature. Mm. Um, but you know, whoever has that that new data is bypassing that, right? Mm. So they become even more important. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a strange world that we live in. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> you know <laughs> so far so. Good. Please. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go in. Go in. Or actually, you, you you want them to like report to the police, right? If they're they're fucking like you know searching guns all the time and like watching fucked up videos and all that, and if the if the if these ad, digital ads like or these platforms actually know that they are doing these kind of stuff, like you almost want them to like say, okay, this this guy is a fucking red flag, you know? Uh, maybe not like directly report I mean, to the police, gover- but the governments are doing this. Also, they know yeah. what the general sense of what you're yeah. doing or not doing. There is a. But they don't. But they're not catching them yet, right? I mean, how do we know? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, you would hope so, right? Yeah, or maybe it's like more like a minority report. Where they, they, they catch a pre, them before, a before they actually do it. There, there is a thing where um, Islamic extremists, for example, some I, I can't remember the full details, so I'm gonna mess this up. They, a nonprofit, um, created um, an ad campaign mm-hmm. that's disguised as a recruitment tool. Mm-hmm. So if you had if you had extreme views, you would think that you're going to extreme website to to propagate and, and share that message of, of hate and all that other stuff, right? But towards the end, as you get more and more deeper into it, it actually reforms you and, and actually puts you on a different path to where you can say, oh, I need help and I need to think about this in a different way. So it's kind mm. of like, like a Trojan horse mm. in, in that respect. So, I mean, yeah, technology can use in a lot of different ways <laughs> for good or bad, and, yeah. and that's the reality. And that's why even YouTube has a lot of issues with them, right. what the content is and why are my ads appearing and things that I have no... As a brand, want to mm-hmm. be next to, yeah. and it's just gonna an algorithm is choosing, right? Because that's where people are spending their time, right? Right. right. So unfortunately, that's where they yeah. spend time in very terrible places. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and they're consumers technically too, right? Right. <laughs> so. Well, you got to. I guess you have to target everybody, and when you're target everybody, then you have to customize it for them. And and again, year over year, the, the algorithms get a little bit more smarter and more more refined, um, and then that's the nature of it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But it's like it's you know, way above. What YouTube can do or Facebook can do, right? Basically, I mean, you have I content mean, moderators in in India 
right? And they have yeah. a very tough job. Yeah. Um, and they, some of them have some level of PTSD. Right. Because all they're doing is looking at content that's not, not oh, easy right. to look at. Right. Um, yeah, the, I've heard about that. Yeah. yeah so yeah. It's, it's a challenge. It's a yeah. human and it's a human problem that you try to use machines to do at least 50, 60, 80% of it. Mm -hmm. But you still need humans to police and train. And, and they're still not going to get... If you expect yeah. perfection, it's not going to happen. Right. Right. It's, it's not. And but I mean they shouldn't even carry that burden either, right? I mean like And that's it, the argument that they don't. They just they're yeah. pipings. They're they yeah. it's let they let information go. Right. But then they you would argue that they have some burden of responsibility. Yeah. I mean, obviously they do, but like you know, they, but you know, they're they're not in a business to do that, right? And then it's like a whole new bowl game for them. Yep. And you know, they make money off a network effect. Yeah. And or and users and more money. Yeah. And then private institution, you know, policing you know the what what content that people get to watch or not is not it's not their job not i popular. don't want them to even like do that either right because who are they to you know be accountable and you go it? somewhere else with your hate right? And, right and there's other like reddit for example went through a huge change mm. three three four years ago right where they right. started removing all of this terrible yeah, yeah. stuff on it right. and they're like we don't want to be in this business to facilitate this mm -hmm. or you have Extreme examples where cloud hosting companies are removing websites. Like they don't want to host your, your website mm -hmm. for the views that you're putting on there. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's right. The, the tide is changing. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's always an argument where you say, you know, the internet should be free. You know, free. Free will is what. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, I, but I should be free not to have someone find out where I live and come down and all these other things. Right? Mm -hmm. There's, like, there's yeah. a challenge. It's always, uh, the balance is always difficult yeah. there. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was a good chat. No. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, thanks a lot. Got complex stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no answers, and probably more paranoia. Right? I think it's. Uh, I mean, g generally, I, I think we're heading in a r the right direction. More right. people are having the conversations. Right. Smarter than I am, they can figure out what the right path is. But right. up until ten years ago, it was very much ignored. Right. Um, but oh, I don't want just smart people. I want ethical people. Right? You know, that's a <laughs> <laughs> well, ethics is more. They're in universities, right. <laughs> studying philosophy, right? T trying to understand if we're a head in a jar somewhere. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot for your time. No, thank I you for having me. Here. Thank you. Future Design Podcast.